are you ready for another forsakening of this faithless bleakage? Gotta be honest, I don't think you are. But we're gonna get into it anyway, and also what the hell just happened to this handler? Not only did you bleak my faith, but you had to bleak my handler as well, goddammit. We got two different updates to cover this time, there's the movement camera and archery overhaul, then some minor fixes and the combat refinement. Plus we got some screenshots by Mr. Fios as well. He also has some bleak faith videos on his channel, so I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check that out. And also, yo, what the hell is that armor, bro? But anyway, so movement camera and archery overhaul, what do we have around here? Forward momentum from weapon attacks can no longer drop the player off ledges. I remember Code Vein did something like this as well. That's a change I really appreciate. I mean, hold it. Wait a minute. Is this a... Uh, well, so <laughs> that's, uh, alright, but yeah, anyway, you can't fall off ledges when you're attacking, that's great. Greatly improved character movement responsiveness, I mean, I haven't played in a while, so I can't really feel the, the but, but I mean, that's always good. Increase the visibility of the currently selected item in the handler upgrading panel, that's actually something I was looking for. Gotta be honest, not a huge fan of the color change, she did stand out in the world quite a bit before, but I kinda saw that as a good thing, because she's a very important character, but now, if she didn't have voice lines, you, you wouldn't even know she was there, like they just turned the handler into a freaking ninja. Anyway, yeah, the selected item is now blue, so it's a lot easier to see what the hell you have selected. Also, you can now refund perk points, but you can only do it one time per New Game Plus. I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. Blocking while holstered will now unholster weapons, very nice. And it is no longer possible to fall off ledges while rolling or dashing if locked on. Let me try this over here, oh yeah. Look at that, it actually checks out, you can try to roll off a ledge, but he won't do it if you're locked on. Although, I mean, that's, yo, kinda dangerous. What if I'm not locked on? Alright, it works. While not aiming with bows, pressing the shoot key will now fire an arrow either at the lock on target or in front of the character instead of doing nothing. That's nice. We can finally go for those 360 no scopes, even though they have the arrow damage, although double the quiver size. But personally, I liked how the arrows work. Iframe timing, yeah, we have iframes now. As far as I know, the dashing doesn't have any iframes, but the rolling. You can see that your character gets obscured for like half a second there and that half a second is what's going to allow you to go through some of these hits, although the timing is kinda tight, it is. Also I'm not entirely sure what they did to the gems, but there were probably some changes because last time I checked I did not have a bunch of chance to inflict DK status effect on this weapon. Also, by the way, is the armor bust? Ah, 50%. I knew this thing was gonna get fucking nerfed sooner or later. But hey, 50% still pretty good. After that, there were some minor fixes and whatnot, and then we get the combat refinement. They added a bunch of new options for your controller, like for example, being able to combine the switch weapons and the holstering weapons, so you can do everything with the same button. In my case, that's square, and if I press square, it changes weapons, if I hold square, it holsters them, and that's very cool. We also now have the ability to do running attacks. Yes, they were introduced into the game, and this should spice up the combat a little bit, but this twin blade though better have some sick ass shit. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, bro, absolutely destroyed. Look at that fucking grit, my god. Here comes another one. Yo, the tracking on this thing, also not bad. Will the running attacks create a new combat meta? I don't know, but they might make a new speedrunning meta, you <laughs> look at that. Game now auto saves roughly every minute to prevent any potential progress loss during a crash. Hopefully that auto save doesn't record your current position, because in this game it's not unlikely that at that point you'd be somewhere outside of the map. Also apparently there's a new mini boss in Ghost Town, unfortunately I am 
pretty far from ghost town right now but that's nice to know by the way i was trying to check out the simplified controls and changing this will reset your current keybinds to selected preset which is fine and you can see some keybinds changing down there as i move through the presets but this movement axis doesn't change with a preset if i have the movement axis on right i mean it like it just Th th this is just weird. Now, I'm not sure if that's intended or not, because I don't know why someone would want to switch the sticks. But if you do, you probably have a good reason for it, and so you might want this change to be global across all presets. So, you know, there's that. Either way, you attack with R1, R2, heavy attacks, no modifier. The parry type is combined, so if I tap the block button, which is L1, he goes for a parry, and if I hold he blocks and honestly this does feel pretty good it's pretty responsive so all right good stuff they told the sprint button to go fuck itself apparently which is weird considering you just added running attacks to the game hold up i just realized this control scheme has rolling with a single press of the circle button and I mean, that's actually pretty... This actually makes this game into fucking Dark Souls, bro, with the iframes. I didn't even think of this. But yeah, you can have different inputs for rolling or just dashing. And I mean, this does feel kind of nice, not gonna lie. Yeah, so these are actually just Dark Souls controls. You can cycle the belt slots with down. And then when you press up, you cycle the abilities. Not so much a fan of the abilities. I mean, I guess they're like the spells in Souls. But, you know, you might want to use a specific ability at a certain time. And so, I mean, eh. But it, whatever, it's fine. Although, the fact that there is no sprinting is kind of weird, I gotta say. Let me just reset this just to be sure. Uh, sprint. Yeah, it, there, there's just no sprint. And honestly, all you gotta do is just this there fixed it you want to go full dark souls mode just just make the sprint button the same thing as the the rolling button i'm going to assume that was probably an oversight also this guy didn't use the v here but yo let me just how much damage does he do yo what actually sensible damage amazing how about me boom and oh he's running away now you little pussy catch your ass over here hey bro god this thing is slow as hell but god damn it hurts oh yo dude chill the fuck out yo eat another one of these bro the goddamn crits on the hammer oh wait a minute valtiel hold up hold up is that their fucking sword Siphon life and carnage. Let me check that out. Life steals every motherfucker in a 15 meter radius. Yo. Also benefits from intelligence and damage all enemies in a 15 meter radius. And oh, this one benefits from strength. So this thing, which looks pretty nice, might I add, has two different abilities that scale off of different things. And depending on your build, you might want to use one or the other. They basically sort of night and flame this shit, but that also means I'm gonna have to upgrade this weapon now because I wanna use it. Otherwise, yeah, we ain't doing any damage. Also, why is that man not moving? Hey, bro, I'll cheese a motherfucker any day of the week, no problem, my guy. Just sit right there. By the way, this object fading when it's in front of the camera looks pretty good, actually. And this was also introduced in one of these new two updates. But yeah, you can see through the environment. Like, look at this. That's that's a very cool effect. Very nice. I like it a lot. You know something I just noticed? I'm at the end game and I have no sharp penetration skills or gems or anything on this weapon. But... I am doing some decent damage, weirdly enough. Did they change anything regarding, like, armor value for enemies? Because I don't think I saw anything like that on the patch notes, but I definitely felt like it was way overtuned. Armor on enemies was the goddamn bane of the endgame, and now 
I mean, well, at least in the last area. I don't know if people are just balanced differently for this area. But, you know, I'm, I'm doing damage, like, you know, <laughs> it feels good. Overall, the balance for this last area, I think it's actually pretty good. I was both doing and taking decent amounts of damage. Although there's one thing I do want to complain about, and that's if I open the start menu, I can exit pressing circle. If I open the inventory, I can exit pressing circle. But if I open the fast travel menu, I can't exit pressing circle. So you actually have to select nowhere. It would add a little bit of quality of life and also this fast travel menu could also use some visibility upgrades because just this text moving slightly forward it's not great. Now I was having a fun time with this level again I think the balance was overall pretty enjoyable but then you get to the boss fight. As a player I don't really see the point of giving a boss a million and three health points besides wasting your time. I did try some of those armor ignoring potions and they're pretty strong but they're not insane and you can I think you can only use like two of them throughout the fight so you know it's not it, it's not gonna do anything crazy maybe it's just me all right but look personally whenever I hit a boss with a weapon and I see that thing doing like 0.3 percent of their health bar I I'm just like like bro I'm gonna be here for a fucking while and I don't mean that in the good way. I mean, I don't think there is a good way. A lot of Souls-like titles do this shit. They just add a bunch of health to bosses for no reason. They say, oh, it's to make things more difficult. It's not difficult. This shit is just fucking boring. Personally, I would just like to see my character do some actual damage. I don't know, you guys let me know in the comments how you feel about the balance. I also tried the Ronin Scarf, which gives you 10% extra armor penetration, but uh, yeah, it, it didn't really do anything. Also, I have no idea what happened, but I just can't attack right now. Do you hear that sound? Yeah, that's the no stamina sound, except I do have stamina, but I can't use attacks for some reason. Yeah, cool. Also, this attack right here by Yulia sometimes sends a single file of uh, whatever it is that she sends forward, but sometimes she's gonna do exactly the same animation and then shoot two instead of one and you're probably gonna get caught by it. I'm not sure if this is intended because it's exactly the same animation but it just does different things sometimes. Also I don't know if you guys still remember this from the last episode but we did beat the doppelganger and now we should be getting the secret ending which I've never seen I don't know what that's like but we're gonna find out. I have no idea what the fuck just happened there, but goddamn that shit was sick! But anyway, the problems with balance in boss fights don't end there, 
because I decided to jump into New Game Plus with my old critical vampire build which was decently strong with nice survivability. Some of the gems on the armor were messed up because the agility gems don't exist anymore. I did end up replacing a lot of them with base weapon damage because I wanted to fight Conrad. I received a comment on I think it was my last video that someone mentioned that this guy was crazy in New Game Plus. And at first I was like, uh, you know, it's probably not that bad, you know, just some casual complaining about the tutorial boss, am I right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm joking by the way, whoever wrote the comment. So I went and fought him. Yeah, it's pretty bad. First off, what the hell is that damage? And then this man fucking one-shots you. Like, what What the hell is going on in New Game Plus, bro? I actually went back, made a new character and fought Conrad on just normal New Game just to see the difference. And yeah, I mean, he's still pretty healthy, but it's doable. Still, for the tutorial boss, I would say, again, this guy is still kinda healthy, you know, a little bit. Plus, you start the game with only two healing items, and like, I know this man's moveset, but a new player will probably uninstall the game right here, man. This has nothing to do with getting good, this has to do with the fact that while this game has gotten a lot better since launch, it still has plenty of jank, and when you basically demand almost near perfection from players, some are just gonna tell you to fuck off, because you're basically force-feeding them some goddamn bullshit. It is what it is. Just to be sure, I also took my new character all the way to the asylum, where you fight another boss, and the bosses scale based off of bosses killed, so this dude should have minimum scaling because I only killed Conrad and now I'm fighting him. But, as you can like, bro, I mean that freaking health bar, just like, there's no way this fight ain't taking like three whole business days like this is crazy for no fucking reason either and again like i only have two heals for this you know i really don't remember these boss fights being this tedious in my first playthrough but i can tell you that if they were i probably wouldn't have made as many bleak faith videos as i did so you know for anyone playing the game now i mean yeah, like, this shit just ain't fun. But anyway, back to our New Game Plus endeavor. After getting through 50% of this man's health, I eventually died, because, I mean, what else are you gonna do against this man? So I decided to try and skip the boss fight, and I took this path over here. My plan was to jump into that walkway over there, but there's actually a death box that developers thought about it, so you can't actually do that. And if you squeeze through here, there is also a death box, but I was trying to maybe I can like roll into it, but you, you die either way. You, you can see my corpse over there. Fair enough, looks like we're gonna have to get creative. God damn it, let's go! I managed to skip the boss! <laughs> Yo! If the developers are watching this video, please just balance this game better. Like these massive health pools don't, don't make the game more challenging. They make it more boring. If somebody that never played Bleak Faith watched this video, he would be probably thinking something like, oh, so I gotta fight a boss for 10 minutes, probably die, go for another 10 on a good day, all of this with a wonky ass combat system, yeah, nah, this is some bullshit, I'm good, thanks. And I can't really blame them for it. And also, you might be interested on how I got around the boss fight, so that's the homunculus right there. And you can get your ass over here, then hop up this thing, come on. And then you can uh, jump up here, then you follow this path, and you find this mountain. And th this is where the magic happens, alright? There you go, and well, that's basically it. You're on the other side of the boss fight. Now, the best part about this is that you can just drop here and continue through the level, or you can drop on this side and then hop over here, 
and now you are underneath the boss arena and that is fucking wild now all you gotta do is go oh, let's go if I could find something to cheese the boss with that would be just the icing on the cake really either way yeah you might want to fix that <laughs> <laughs>